and I would first order of business, I would like to invite up County Clerk Annie Rabbit, uh, Tom Fagione, and no, the pledges afterwards. Yep, we're okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm following the script, otherwise I wouldn't know either. <laughs> okay, Tom and his girlfriend, Carolyn Doherty. Dennis is in the audience. This is your replacement, Dennis. Just so you know. Okay, Annie, go ahead, I'm sorry. Congratulations, Tom. Welcome aboard. Please stand for a moment of silence and the pleasure of life. We have three proclamations. I'd like to invite up the oh, roll call first. I'm sorry. You'll help me a lot. <laughs> Jern, that's it. Monica? Yes. Ikis? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Present. Benton? Here. Berkman? Here. Benelli? Here. Cheney? Here. Dillard? Here. DeSalvo? Present. Fagione, Hines, Hemnins, Pulisek, Paduk, Miscavige, Sullivan, Here. Turnbull, Here. Biro, Here. Wong, Here. Brescia, Here. 21 present. Okay, we have three proclamations tonight. The first would be National Tourette Syndrome Awareness Month. The county exec will come up. Nadia Allen, Executive Director of Mental Health Association. Debbie DeJong, Associate Director of Mental Health Association. Natasha Tomlins, Development Disabilities Family Support Coordinator, Mental Health Association, and speakers Cameron Figueroa with his mom, Jocelyn. Then I'll announce the others when we're up there. I was told just one person, Cameron, so he was the only one on my list. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. So as the chairman mentioned, uh, we're here for uh, Tourette uh, Syndrome Awareness Month of uh, Orange County. I'm going to read a couple of stats quick. Uh, uh, Steve's going to talk a little bit about the proclamation. And uh, more importantly, we're going to hear from Cameron. So uh, we're looking forward to that more than anything. Uh, Tourette Syndrome affects uh, 200,000 Americans and millions more worldwide. Uh, three out of four uh, males are affected more than uh, females. Uh, so th these are some of the stats out there. With early diagnosis, intervention, and treatment, there are no barriers to achievement to, in personal and professional lives of those diagnosed. And uh, persons uh, who are affected can also be found in all professions in our society. Uh, so what we like to do every month is try to highlight um, some of these uh, that are going in on in our community so we can raise awareness and uh, increase the support for them. So with that, I'll turn it over to the chairman. Vice President, this is the camera. Uh, think so. yeah, okay. It's more important that Cameron speak than us, but this is a pro proclamation from the legislature signed by the county exec and myself. And uh, I'll read the first whereas and the last whereas. Whereas Tourette syndrome is a neurological disorder that is characterized by involuntary rapid sudden movements and or vo vocalizations that occur repeatedly. And whereas Tourette syndrome awareness month provides an opportunity for advocates, families of children with Tourette syndrome 
and other caring individuals in the community to focus on the needs of the people who have Tourette's Syndrome. It is fitting to increase the public awareness among all residents of Orange County about this important matter. Now, now therefore, I, County Executive Steve Newhouse, and I, L. Stephen Brescia, Chairman, do hereby proclaim May 15th through June 15th as Tourette's Syndrome Awareness Month. And I'm going to present this to you. Hello, I'm Cameron Figueroa, and I like to play uh, playing video games. Um, working with computers, running cross country and track, going hiking and camping. I'm a regular teenager, and I have Tourette syndrome. When I first started having symptoms at the age of seven, my mom noticed before I did. I was in second, in second grade. Uh, that summer, she took me to a doctor to see if I had epilepsy or Tourette syndrome. I remember them sticking electrodes to my head with the blue. It ended up that I had Tourette syndrome because I had at least one vocal tick and one motor tick. In the third grade, I was teased and the teacher didn't, didn't understand what I had, even though my mom tried to explain it. In fourth grade, I was classified with an IEP and I got extra help. In fifth grade, my mom came in and spoke to my class about <coughs> Tourette syndrome felt better that more people knew. Three years ago, I became a big buddy for a little buddy with Tourette syndrome. Since that time, I have, I've had a total of four, uh, four and my last buddy was uh, became a big buddy and a youth ambassador. It feels good to help out someone younger with the same issues that I have. In the past, I was teased for my Tourette syndrome. I want to teach others about Tourette syndrome so that what happened to me doesn't happen to other kids younger. As of March 2013, I became a youth ambassador and have spoken to students in different groups. The Cub Scouts, Menacing Gay Straight Alliance, and the TSA support group. I, I helped out at the Tourette Syndrome booth at several fairs, spoken on the Health Matters radio show, and have a, a few times have um, I've accepted this proclamation for the past three years. By doing this, I have uh, given awareness to Tourette syndrome and taught about what Tourette syndrome is. What helped me get through the hard times was the support of the Tourette syndrome association, the support of group through the Mental Health Association. In March of 2013, I was lucky to have the opportunity to meet staff, staff of representative uh, Sean Patrick Maloney, Senator Trumner, 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 uh, S Senator Gillibrand's office at the annual TSA's Capitol Hill. I had the chance to explain what Tourette syndrome was and how it affected my life. It, it is important to let people in the government know about Tourette syndrome because they make the laws that affect education and medical laws that people living with Tourette syndrome need continuing funding for. I plan to attend the next uh, national conference in 2016 and again make the trip to the Capitol Hill. I received extra help in school due to my difficulty with writing and organization and I have learned to use tools to help me like my laptop and Bookshare which is a book reading app for when my tics interfere with my reading. I will be participating in the OCC Tech Program for Computers next year. I plan to go to college in two years for computers. I have not let Tourette Syndrome stop me from pursuing my dreams. I hope that when I grow up, there is a cure, but for now, the best way I can help, help is through education, awareness, and mentoring. I would like to thank the Orange County Legislature for continuing to make major changes. Tourette Syndrome Awareness Month here in Orange County. Um, I'd like to take a few moments to thank the legislator and executive speaking the House for having us. Um, I'm really proud of Cameron. I've watched him grow over the years, and um, for that reason, he will be receiving an award through MHA Community Service and Volunteer uh, Awards Day on May 21st. And uh, it's a really nice award, and we're very proud of him. Um, 
I'd also like to mention we do have a 1 800 number, 1 800 832 1200 at Mental Health Association, and text for teens available for teens that are in a dilemma. So there's lots of easy ways to access us, and um, the legislatures have all the information for tech at our website. So thank you again for everything, and congratulations. Isn't Cameron amazing? you I won't read it tonight and uh, I'll reiterate what you said we you know many of the seniors are preyed upon and we saw that recently in the Times Herald record with the IRS scam that was going on so let's try to get that on the county website and the municipal websites out there in the press and a lot of municipalities have code reds too let's get, get it out there on the code red so this these kind of things don't happen but I'd like to thank thank Anne Marie for the great job she does with the Office of the Aging. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, the last one we have is uh, Foster Parent Month Anybody here representing? Should be Ann Caldwell, yes. Deputy Commissioner. Okay, Beth Van Pelt, Case Supervisor of the Home, Fi Home Finding Unit, OCDSS, excuse me. And foster parents for 31 years, Elsa and Albert Castellanos. And I'll turn the uh, proclamation over to you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just read a quick things and then Ann, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, in uh, 1988, uh, Ronald Reagan began this initiative, uh, Foster Parent Month. May has been designated uh, Foster Parent Month in Orange County. Uh, in the U.S., there are about 400,000 children and youth in foster care. It seems so low, it's such a big country, but it's uh, important. Uh, the youth of this uh, county, state, nation uh, are our most precious resources uh, and the hope for our future. All children deserve a caring and nurturing home so that they may reach their full potential. Uh, Orange County has 197 foster families providing care for 204 Orange County children. So, uh, impressive. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Again, I'll read this proclamation from the first whereas and the last whereas and therefore. Whereas May has, May, excuse me, has designated Worcester, been designated Worcester Parent Month in Orange County, and whereas it is an important, it is important to recognize the invaluable contribution foster parents make to the children of Orange County by so willingly giving their time and devotion to improving these children's quality of life. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Stephen M. Newhouse, and I, L. Stephen Brescia, of the legislature, do hereby proclaim May 2015 as foster parent month. And I'll present this to you. A few words, Anna. Thank um, our county executive, Steve Newhouse, Jim Brescia, and the legislature for recognizing Foster Parent Month. Um, we're certainly very proud of our foster parents. I'd like to take a moment, too, to introduce Beth Manfeld and uh, to thank her and her staff. They're our home finding unit, and they 
recruit, uh, certify, train, and support our 197 foster families. So very important work that they do, and we really appreciate that. Um, foster families provide an absolutely invaluable service. They're our greatest resource. Um, children come to them having suffered through abuse, neglect, uh, with serious physical, emotional, developmental, and other types of challenges. And people open their hearts and their homes. They care for them like their own children. Um, they make them part of their family. Often, they go on to adopt uh, the foster children that become available. Last year, 28 children found their forever family with their foster family. So uh, nothing more wonderful than having permanency and, and loving and, and nurturing. And that helps them to go on to be productive, um, positive adults and contribute to the community where um, that might not happen if it weren't for these foster parents. So we're very proud today to have with us our foster parents that have the most longevity in our program, 31 years of foster parenting, 60 foster children. They've provided care to um, young moms with their babies within their home. Uh, they've stayed in touch with many of their children, offering them even a place to stay when they need it as a young adult sometimes even an older adult. Just having that caring person involved in your life really can make all the difference uh, to these young people. So um, Elsa and Albert, we'd like to uh, congratulate you and thank you so much for your service. And I'm going to recognize the county exec to say a few words, and I do want to say a few words. How many do we have signed up for public? 13. I know there's a lot of people here regarding Rocky's law, but just know that I, I'm almost positive the legislature is going to pass it tonight, so I don't want to limit any speech, but maybe if you were going to be more than three minutes, to just know that we're going to pass it tonight. So, county exec. Uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the legislature, uh, obviously uh, the chairman just mentioned Rocky's law. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, I think the other things in front of you, uh, they are they're going to fall where they may. Uh, but I wanted to bring you up to date about the parallel review for um, the Curious Joe Island annexation. Um, last week after I got a barometer that every legislator for the most part that I have talked to, except for I think one, is in favor of this, I believe it's going to pass tonight, I said that I would start the RFP process because of the speed of this annexation. Uh, documents have been filed last Friday online from the village of, of Kyrgyz Rwal. It's been vet, we're vet, starting to vet those uh, 600 plus pages. Uh, but let me just tell you where we are because when you debate this now and if, and if this is passed, how fast this is going to have to start uh, going. Uh, tomorrow the RFPs are going to be coming in. And uh, in the legislative process I asked, uh, or I said I'd like to see at least five legislators Maybe more, you guys can come in and sit there and be part of this with Dave Church uh, as we go through and vet the applicants. Uh, so I, I identified five. We can talk about this afterwards. We can talk about this on the, on the dais. I thought that Myrna Chemnitz, because she represents Monroe, Katie Benelli, uh, Michael Amo, uh, Jimmy DeSalvo, and Michael Anagostakis, because he's been uh, very familiar with the issue, to be at the table. Uh, I also uh, believe that as a, as a criteria that we have people that uh, have never worked for any of those municipalities. They've never worked for the Village of Kirishwell or the Town of Monroe, so you have somebody that's bringing a fresh eyes to the review. So we've pledged Orange County when we've talked about this, many of you were at the forum, that we would do an open process. I think we have more stuff on our website than the people that are doing the actual review right now. Uh, and we want to continue to do that and provide that to the public. So I just wanted to let you know that if you adopt this tonight, we're going to move forward with this. Because uh, we have to, because at the speed that that annexation is going. 
this is not something that we could sit and debate this for a couple of weeks after that. So I think you all know that. I just wanted to keep you in the loop of this as we went through the process. So, anybody have any questions? No, thank, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Okay, first up is Bruce Pollock regarding the KJ annexation. He's from the town of Monroe. Ladies and gentlemen of the legislator, legislature, uh, I'd like to lend my voice to this uh, parallel review of the annexation proposal and ask you to please do as thorough a job as you can. Because from everything I've been hearing and everything I've been seeing, the review that has been done, the CEQA review, is at best, I would say, incomplete. Um, I would say more likely and uh, one-sided, and I'd like to see a review that takes into account the projected growth that's going to happen in that from the 507 acres, but to not do so is just ridiculous. You know and I know what's going to happen with that land. It's going to turn into high-density housing. Our environment is going to suffer. Economically, the county is going to suffer, and the state is going to suffer. And, uh, at this point, I'm looking to you our interests and hopefully uh, we'll do thank you very much thank you Bruce um, regarding Rocky's law is it sheer sheer oh Sherry correct me when you get up here Sherry please <laughs> from Monroe How are you all tonight? You can move that, tilt it down toward your face. Pull the microphone down a little bit. The end of it, yeah. There you go. First thing you did was make my whole day. We attended another court hearing this morning and it didn't go very well. So the fact that you already kind of made my day by telling us you're gonna pass it. So I'm just gonna th throw a few things at you. First off, thank you, David Hoogler. Thank you, SPCA. Thank you, Pets Alive. Thank you for all the people, the attorneys that I put the time in to write Rocky's Law because each time you had to tweak it a little bit, it took extra time. But the fact that we're going to be the first state in the United States that's going to offer a registry of a person's photo. Not only that, but make people, today we're here about making people take consequences. It's about consequences of your actions. It's about, at the end of the day, Rocky's story. Rocky's looking down from heaven right now, and he's very happy. Rocky's story, I heard on the 6 o'clock news. You're going to say, well, so it's just another story. I devoted my whole entire life to working with animals. I'm a nanny for dogs. So I didn't sleep well for three nights after this, and then I totally dove into the story to find out what happened. Well, here's what happened. You don't know what happened fully. It did turn out that there were some complaints. Edward Mesita went on a five week vacation. I had the dog on a five feet long tethered line and left it with no food, no water. Now, I have statistics for you. This is how much snow fell from the date, which was five weeks, I counted back, how much snow fell on that poor boy? 30 inches of snow, no roof, no food, no water. The statistics on your weather as far as the temperatures. I want you to know this because this is what you're doing, you're helping him. So this doesn't happen to another dog. During that time period, four days were above 32 degrees. Four days. He had a week in the end of March where he had a reprieve for four days because it actually, you know, wasn't below. When Mr. Mesita left on the 20th of February, it was minus two. When he came back, it was above 30. How nice of him. At the end of the day, in my Pollyanna world, I want to see animals respected 
and treated the way they deserve. And if anyone does commit crimes on them, abuse, neglect, and let me be clear about what an ab abuse and neglect is. You don't provide adequate shelter, food, or any kind of physical abuse. I would like to ultimately see in Pollyanna world where I live in my, I also am a children's book writer on Amazon. In my Pollyanna world, I would like to see people like this pay with high fines, jail time, anger management classes, psychiatric, psychiatric care, because there's something wrong with these people. Sorry, please conclude. Sorry. Thank you so much, and I don't know how to thank you enough. In the end of the, word, and the, end of the day, in my family and the world, all the animals will be respected and cared for, and if anyone hurts them, someone's got to pay a consequence, and that's what this bill's about today. Thank you. Uh, Victoria Shade, Goshen, Rockies Law. I'm an attorney in Goshen. I also am a pet owner. Um, you may have heard of our story in the newspapers. I own Daisy. She was a boxer that um, I had on my property. A, a landscaper came in on my backyard, sliced off her paw with his riding lawnmower, and left. Um, he didn't tell anyone. He didn't provide any kind of assistance to my dog. She was left bleeding. I was just lucky that I had a pet sitter on the property who found her in that condition. Uh, rushed her to the vet, but now Daisy is a tripod. Her entire front and left leg had to be amputated. He was prosecuted. Um, he was charged with New York Ag and Markets Law 353, uh, cruelty to animals, and that carries with it a penalty of up to a year in prison. He walked away with just probation. So I think that I don't know if the judicial branch in the state is recognizing the significance of these cruelty crimes. They are rampant, they lead to other crimes, domestic violence, and we need to pass this law so that it stops there. It doesn't go any further. There needs to be a registry. There's one for domestic violence. Why would there not be one to animal cruelty that leads to domestic violence a lot of times? Um, so that's my spiel. I know that there are other people here that want to speak. I want to keep it under three minutes. There's also um, Taylor Sterling from WTBQ really wanted to be here, but she had a family emergency, so she asked me to just read a couple sentences, if that's okay. Um, so this is what Taylor has to say. I'm sure that our legislature will do the right thing this evening and pass Rocky's Law without any nays, as this is the only humane thing to do. That, that would be a legacy to leave for our children and not only the county and the state, but also the rest of the nation, that we are compassionate, feeling, thinking human beings. I'm also positive that our Orange County Executive, Steve Newhouse, will sign it into law, as Steve is the epitome of, hum of humane, compassionate, and intelligent. Send a message from our leaders to the entire county that starving, neglecting, and abusing innocent lives is not acceptable and those who do shall never have the chance to commit such heinous crimes ever again. I will be proud to announce your names and your decision on the air on the number one drive time TV show uh, <laughs> tomorrow morning. So that's Taylor's feel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Victoria. Next is Cindy O'Brien uh, from Wordsboro on Rocky's Law. Hi, my name is Cindy O'Brien. I'm from, uh, I actually work for Pets Alive Animal Sanctuary in Middletown. I'm Um, all of the animals that come into my personal care are from cruelty cases, and I've seen quite a few in the four years that I've worked for Pets Alive. There are a couple things that I would like you guys to note. One is that every one of those cases, they had prior convictions of animal cruelty, or at least witnesses and testimony of prior, of prior cruelty. Another thing is that many of the cases that have come to me have also been linked to domestic abuse of the violent situations where the defendants have been going through court as well for situations in their families and sometimes assault. These are just huge, huge indicators of what the mentality of these people are. It is not easy actually to convict someone of animal cruelty and that has to be done by the court of law and at that point that's where this registry will take place. 
far as keeping animals safe in the future. Um, oftentimes we work with the SPCA, and oftentimes it does take years to even get a cruelty case in front of a judge and to actually convict. And it's, it, there's a lot that's involved with documentation and it has to be solid. It's not just about activists going up and saying, this person isn't treating this animal correctly. It's about a, a judge and the district attorneys really finding these people guilty. And then, you know, sentencing somewhat accordingly, which again is another issue that can be addressed further on down the line as far as laws to protect our animals. And um, currently, there are so many cases of animal abuse and cruelty going through the courts. Most of the time, it's not recognized by the people. It might be one blip in the news. It, through the court system, things are adjourned, it's postponed, it gets lost in the wayside. I think even just having a turnout as we have for, for this and for Rocky's Law proves that we do care. We all care. Because if these people do treat animals with, in this manner and allow such incredible suffering as really has to happen for them to even be convicted, they will treat any being that way. And, this, and it has to stop. It has to stop there. And, and then we can work on the rest of the system kind of as it goes. As an organization that also adopts out dogs and cats, we are always worried about where our animals go. How will we know if this person that comes before us has been convicted of animal cruelty prior? And oftentimes, we just do the best that we can in order to find good homes. And sometimes these animals come back to us, sometimes we check in on them and find not a good home. This is where a registry such as this will really benefit organizations like mine and benefit all animals from here on in the future. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Okay, Bonnie Makovsky, excuse me, Burleyville, New York, Rockies Law. In 1975, Gary Rosdahl devised what was described as the perfect pet. It was called the pet rock. No messes, no allergies, no effort. Unfortunately, there are too many people in our midst today who give their pets no more consideration than they would a pet rock. Not feeding or watering your plants for a few days is neglect. Not feeding or watering your hamster for a few weeks is abuse. But not feeding or watering your dog for over a month, tied up, left alone outside in the bitterest weeks of winter is pure and simple torture. Rocky, for whom Mr. Anagnostakis' proposed law is named, must have been waiting patiently, longing for someone to come, whining quietly, getting tired and laying down. No one ever came back for him, just the rats. Nathan Winograd, a former criminal prosecutor who handled numerous animal cruelty prosecutions, found that within one year of their conviction, 80% of the perpetrators reoffended. According to Dr. Gail Stecky, a professor at Boston University's School of Social Work, the relapse rate for animal hoarders is near 100%, as noted in the draft findings. These people cannot be allowed to repeat the cycle of abuse and violence again and again and again. Violence against animals is a well-documented precursor to violence against people, children, women, the elderly, us all. An article published by the Michigan State University College of Law, which explores the connection between cruelty to animals and human violence, concludes that schools, parents, communities, and courts that dismiss cruelty to animals as a minor crime are ignoring a time bomb. The FBI announced in the fall of 2014 that it would reclassify animal abuse as a crime against society, making it a Group A felony with its own category, the same way crimes like homicide, arson, and assault are listed. We have a chance here today to stop this, to save the most vulnerable of our society, our trusting pets to our trusting children. Rocky represents so many of the voiceless victims that go unheard and often unseen. 
Let him be a symbol that we will not tolerate this cruelty. Five New York counties, as well as all five New York City boroughs, have passed laws requiring registration for prior animal abuse offenders. According to the Best Friends Society, 20 states and some cities have passed legislation targeting puppy mills. Now is the time for Orange County to join in this leadership towards creating a more just society for every sentient being who cannot represent themselves. Thank you for passing Rocky's Law. Thank you. Dennis Wayne Penanga in the town of Montgomery, Rocky's Law. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dennis Wayne Penega. I'm a self-employed carpenter, and I live in Walden. I'm also an animal lover, and I'm here to show support for Rocky's Law. As we all know, laws protect us and keep us safe from harm. They act as a deterrent against criminal behavior. And we can all have peace of mind knowing ourselves and every member of our families will be protected. Every member but one, that is. You see, our loving pets aren't afforded that same luxury even though we do consider them members of the family. But we can change that here tonight. My friends, the time is right for this law because there is an enormous amount of public support for it as, uh, at home as well as global. And I'd like to talk about that now. On April 14th of last month, I started an online petition titled Support Rocky's Law. And in just a little over three weeks, it has gathered over 1,800 signatures and counting. This is from all over the world in areas such as Argentina, Singapore, Germany, Australia, Russia, Sweden, China, Turkey, Greece, Ukraine, Belgium, Finland, Indonesia, Italy, France, Israel. And I have all of those signatures of support with me tonight. And in a moment, I would like to offer them to the clerk for the record, if I may. These 1,809 individuals, as well as myself, do respectfully and humbly ask for your votes of yes in support of Rocky's Law this evening, so that, may we, so that we may finally begin to protect the most innocent and defensive, defenseless members of the family. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vincent Ferry, Rockville, Orange County Government Center. Yesterday, I met a retired member of the Swiss Parliament, and he asked me to read the following declaration about the Orange County Government Center. I'm from Switzerland, and a member of the Board of Directors of the Paul Rudolph Heritage Foundation. Something very strange is going on, something that doesn't make sense to me. The fate of the Orange County Government Center has gotten attention around the world, and people are asking me, wouldn't it be logical for local government to take the most economical and speedy route Taking up the alternative plan gets new and renovated government offices up and running the quickest way and most money-saving way. Something's not logical here. All governments are struggling to pay their bills, so why not choose the least expensive and fastest way, a bargain really, to get good office facilities? I confess when I look at the facts, I also don't see the sense in demolishing this building. As you Americans say, it just doesn't add up. Please tell me, and all the people out there watching what's going on here, how have you arrived at this weird situation of spending more money and more time when a better solution is on the table? Also, saving the building with the alternative plan is the quickest way to revive the local economy. Businesses all around will benefit. At the same time, I'd like to state that I find the Orange County Government Center by Paul Rudolph to be a true masterpiece of modern architecture modern American architecture, which should be preserved for future generations, and which can be a true tourism magnet, also helping the local economy. Sincerely and respectfully, Paul Anis Hanslin, uh, Board of Directors of the Paul Rudolph Heritage Foundation. Now my comments about the secret. The county plans a major demolition and construction program, as well as the addition of over 300 parking spaces at the government center. This is a type one action, and environmental impact statement should have been prepared and needs now to be prepared. A scoping session should be held and all interested agencies invited. 
The purposes of those sessions are to identify all critical environmental impacts for study and allow input from knowledgeable and interested parties. It is clear from the long form which we have recently received that the county wants to circumvent this process. No environmental impact study has ever been prepared and there is no empirical information confirming the county's claim that there will be no air pollution or water pollution or noise pollution from these activities. The county goes so far as to claim that there will be no increase in emissions though hundreds of trucks will be required to remove some 9,000 tons of demolition debris. It is clear the environmental review is intended to conform with a predetermined outcome and this, friends, is illegal. Uh, now some un unprepared comments about this. According to New York labor law, no work whatsoever, nothing, no barriers, no, uh, no preparation work whatsoever can be legally done without a Department of Labor having received an asbestos removal and disposal plan. This hasn't been done, and the county is clearly violating the law and has unprotected workers inside of this facility. We will do our best to notify the Department of Labor and OSHA about these violations. Thank you. Next speaker is Steve Brander, Central Valley, Orange County Government Center. I was on site as recently as yesterday with uh, members from the Paul Rudolph Heritage Foundation. They are in. Uh, they are they are in the beginning stages of kicking off a one year, uh, 100 year anniversary of his birth. Uh, this is a declaration. I also have copies of it that I would like to hand out to you all. I'll give you. Um, a Declaration of Saving the Orange County Government Center, which was built during the years 1963-67, that includes the design, uh, designed by celebrated architect, American architect Paul Rudolph, and now threatened by destruction. The Paul Rudolph Heritage Foundation is alarmed about the possible destruction of the Orange County Government Center designed by Paul Rudolph. This is an architectural masterpiece unique in the whole world. It has a special place in Goshen and capital of Orange County, New York. Its demolition wouldn't rip away from the future uh, generations the possibility of seeing this outstanding work of civic design. It would be a destruction of our heritage, a diminishment of our legacy to future generations. Now, there are practical, economical, and timely proposals to avoid the demolition of this great American building and at lower cost than the project currently favored by the county executive and many of the county legislators. The alternative proposal, number one, saves the taxpayers millions of dollars does not require the destruction of this masterpiece, permits an even faster reuse of the now closed port facilities located in Division two, or Division three rather, of the Government Center, fulfills all space requirements for efficient county legislature administration and court facilities, allows part of the existing building complex to be used for artist studios, bringing more life and economic activity to the town of Goshen. It brings most of the building back onto the tax rolls and revitalizes local business activity much faster than the government's current plan. Therefore, we urge the county legislature to, number one, abandon plans to demolish Orange County Government Center, uh, actively pursue the practical alternative projects that have been proposed. They have the triple advantage of costing less, entailing a shorter implementation phase, and bringing business to the community in much less time. Safeguard the finances and good reputation of the community by going with the less expensive and quicker to implement alternative proposals. Maintain Goshen as the home of an outstanding architectural masterwork which will attract visitors from all over the planet once it is restored. The world is watching Orange County Legislature. Please don't be remembered as throwing away a unique architectural masterpiece and costing the community money and time. The Paul Rudolph Heritage Foundation sincerely hopes the legislature will make the right decision to keep and renovate the work of Paul Rudolph, which one which exists in only one time and place in this world, and that is our own beautiful, peaceful Goshen, which is also privileged to have many other outstanding historic buildings. Attribution is respectfully yours, Ernst P. Wagner, President, Paul Rudolph Heritage Foundation, East 58th Street, New York, New York. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Frank Carbone, Jr., neighbor, Orange County Government Center.
Good evening. And good evening to everybody out there. And I want to uh, thank my own uh, legislator, Mike Anagastakis, for proposing Rocky's Law. I think it's a great thing. And I appreciate you taking the lead on many, many things, and this is one of the best. And also, thank you for those legislators who uh, abstain from voting when there's a conflict of interest. And I think there's more that need to do this. I don't know how many more, but I know at least one. Uh, I was going to say something about the Paul Rudolph uh, Heritage Foundation, but mention it. So, not much has changed in since 1911. I'm going to read an op-ed piece that I put in, if you don't mind, in, 19, in uh, 2011, uh, September. Orange County Executive Diana's plan to demolish the government center isn't justified. Orange County taxpayers know we're living in austere times and this project will likely cost more than is projected. If Diana has the extra millions to spend, then let's prioritize and spend it on our failing school systems. At a time when most infrastructure needs upgrading, for example, bridges, roads, storm, sanitary, drinking water systems, the county executive decides to demolish a sound building simply because the roof leaks and windows aren't energy efficient. But what, what, what a waste. Orange County taxpayers struggle to keep and maintain their homes while town and county school taxes and costs of living increase. Shrinking school budgets affect the quality of education, facilities, and teachers while the county plans to squander <coughs> hundreds of millions on a new government building. Is there one other county public servant who agrees? Speak up, please. My high-tech building maintainability engineering and planning experiences tell me that the roof and windows can be upgraded in carefully planned stages so that costs and inconveniences are spread over an acceptable period of time. This cost-effective plan will also benefit county tradesmen and women and local businesses. Let's Frank, does this have to do with the seeker? Because the seeker is an agenda item. Is it germane to the seeker? I'm going to, well, yes. Let's get there then. And uh, I'm going to finish with that. Let's all ensure okay. our tax money is used where it is really needed and not where it's simply wanted. As far as seeker is concerned, I reviewed all of the asbestos reports for the building. Only, and I advise you all to look at them, the lab reports show that the majority of tests they took showed no asbestos found. Very few reports show asbestos. The places where I saw it, it's already encapsulated. It doesn't, this work that's being done there is totally unnecessary. I wish you would look at those reports, get them, read them, and see it for yourself. What a waste of taxpayers' money. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Mike Sweeney, Orange County Association of Towns, Villages, and Cities regarding the seeker on the... KJ. Seeker on KJ. So um, thank you, Sorry. Mr. Chairman, the legislature. Appreciate it. I'm um, here tonight as the president of the Orange County Association of Towns, Villages, and Cities. And I'm um, here to support your effort to do a thorough, complete, and open seeker review of the potential annexation. This, just on its surface, has the uh, potential to change the face of Orange County forever. We need to have a process that the majority of the residents of Orange County believe in and trust. And whatever the results are, they are. But there is a general sense, justified or not, that the process that's on being undergone right now by the village of Curious Joel is not going to produce a thorough, open, and complete analysis of the impacts. So the association, the majority of the members who were present, voted in favor of, res of a resolution to support your effort to do this. And I think Commissioner Church and his department are eminently qualified to do that. And we uh, agree with the county executive that this needs to be done as quickly as possible because the process is moving very rapidly um, by the uh, leaders of the, uh, the village of Curious Joel. So I'll give you this resolution tonight. We had already ported it over to your office, and we thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Pat O'Dwyer, Goshen, Government Center, or Chester, rather. Pass. Pass. Okay, thanks, Pat. Emily Converse, 
Monroe regarding the 200,000 foot peril environmental review, KJ annexation. Good evening, County Executive, members of the legislature. I'm Emily Convair, resident of the village of Monroe. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and for holding this meeting in the evening when it's more convenient for moms like me and working people to attend. I appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to speak about the resolution on the table to spend the $200,000 on a parallel environmental review study on the 507 acre annexation. As you may know, the DGEIS, the Draft Generic Environmental Impact Statement, has been completed and was released as of last Friday. Um, this annexation is being fast-tracked, and so far it appears that Curious Joel, the lead agency in this process, is moving forward under the assumption that no particular development is projected. We know for a fact, since the KJ government stated so in a document, which was sent to the Environmental Facilities Corporation, that KJ is proposing 8,550 units to be built on the 507 acres. Uh, my statement to the county now is, unless you plan to conduct your study based on the construction of 8,550 residential units, in addition to the over 1,000 units projected for retail use, your $200,000 review will not be useful, and in fact will come to the same conclusion that KJ's review will no doubt come to. So I urge the legislature, should you vote yes in moving forward with this resolution to spend $200,000, that you insist that the review include the full impact of such development or don't undertake the study at all. In addition, since a complete study is a time-consuming process and we're fast approaching the summer when people go away and people tend to slow down the pace, it may not be realistic to think that a study of this magnitude could be completed in pace with the rate that Curious Joel is moving ahead. June 10th is the date of the public hearing in, for the uh, 507 acre annexation. So perhaps the county would be wise to use some of the $200,000 for litigation and to litigate on the basis that this is in fact an illegal land grab since the purpose is to change the zoning which is not a legal reason for annexation. If approved, this annexation will have tremendous environmental and fiscal impacts throughout the entire county. Um, two more quick things. Um, Brendan Coyne, Mayor Brendan Coyne of Cornwall wanted to speak tonight, but he, he didn't see the sign-up sheet. And he pretty much wanted to echo the sentiment that uh, if this uh, $200,000 study does not include the full impact and build out, then it would be a, a waste. Um, but that he, he urges a, a thorough review. And lastly, I just wanted to say that there are many citizens within the village of Curious Joel who are very wary of this annexation as well, as evidenced by the, the brave guys in the back of the room right now. So thank you again for your time and consideration. Thank you. Uh, we don't do that, no, sorry. You can speak at the end of the agenda, though. Okay. Okay. Uh, Majority Leader Bonasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of February 5th, 2015. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Majority Leader Bonasek again. Thank you. I move to vote collectively on items number 16 and 17. Second. Okay, if there are no objection, objections, excuse me, this, these items will be voted on collectively. Are there any referrals, consents, or withdrawals? I have one. Uh, this is with regard to uh, agenda item number 25. Uh, you'll see there's a replacement on your desk. Um, I got a call today from uh, Senior Assistant District Attorney Bob Conflitti regarding the grant uh, from uh, federal government and DCGIS for 85000 for the Gun-Initiated Violence Elimination Grant. Uh, 
He, he received a call from them saying that uh, as soon as the county legislature uh, approves the uh, receipt of the monies, uh, they can hire the person and, and the monies would be available immediately. So he's asked that we change the term of the grant uh, to read uh, that the grant runs from on or about June 1st, 2015 through uh, May 31st, 26. So I'd ask that we withdraw the 20, number 25 that's in your packet and replace it with the new agenda 20, item number 25. And we, can we do that or we need yeah. to take a motion? Um, yeah. Would the sponsors have to do that, right? Nika <coughs> Subbanasek for the sponsors? Uh, I that, okay. okay, all in favor? Uh, Opposed, carried. Okay, where were we? Okay, Mr. Vera. I request a number, item number 15 on the agenda, bond resolution authorizing the acquisition of equipment for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $150,000, appropriating $100,000 therefore, in addition to the $50,000 previously appropriated, and authorizing the issuance of $100,000 in bonds for the county to finance said appropriation be withdrawn from the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, numbers, it says your numbers 1 through 15. Okay, that's it. Yeah, okay. Okay, agenda item number one, local law, Rocky's Law. There's the Nagastakis, Bonasek, Hines, and DeSalvo. Local law introductory number three of 2015, a local law of the county of Orange, New York, to be known as Rocky's Law, protecting animals from abuse by establishing a registry for animal abusers. Second. Discussion, legislator Nagastakis. Thank you, Chairman Brescia. Wow. Um, I'm probably going probably gonna to cut my statement uh, short because I don't think there was any way um, to top all the great comments from all the animal lovers that were here tonight advocating for Rocky's Law. Um, Chairman, as you know, when animals come into this world, they, they come into the world as pure love, innocent. And they're looking to love us all their lives. And unfortunately, sometimes, they don't get that love in return. And it uh, doesn't take much to find stories in the newspaper, almost every week now, such as the following. Actual stories from newspapers. Titles, two injured abused dogs in trash containers found. Man who set puppy on fire faces sentencing. Guilty plea in case of cruelty to horses. Woman starves cats to death. Man sent to jail for squashing a puppy's head. Rocky's law is going to prevent any of these individuals from getting their hands on animals again to commit the heinous crimes that we read about every day. They would be prevented from getting their hands on animals for 15 years. And God forbid if they committed another crime during that period and were convicted of another animal cruelty crime, they'd be on the registry and prevented from having animals for life. Now, I've mentioned Rocky's Law a few times, and the individuals came up and mentioned Rocky's Law. I want to take a moment, if I can, and introduce you to Rocky in case you haven't met Rocky before. This is Rocky. And if I can, very quickly, I'll give you Rocky's story from a Times Herald Record article on March 28th of this year. And I'm going to keep the man's name out of it. I will call him the defendant. The defendant, 23 years old, left his three-year-old male Staffordshire Terrier outside without food, water, shelter, or vet care 
and exposed to below freezing temperatures and snow while he went on a five-week vacation. By the time the defendant returned, the dog named Rocky weighed only 35 pounds, about half his normal weight. The dog was unable to stand, lift his head, eat or drink, and was suffering from hypothermia. He also had suffered rat bites because he was too weak to defend himself. Rocky was brought to a veterinarian, but his condition had deteriorated to a point that he had to be euthanized. So today we have Rocky's Law before us to prevent things like this from happening again to animals. And I want to thank everyone that had a part in bringing Rocky's Law to us today. And there are too many people to thank. I definitely want to thank the Chairman, Mr. Brescia, for allowing me to move forward. Uh, the Majority Leader, Ms. Bonasek, the Committee Chairs, Ms. Benelli and Mr. Hines, the District Attorney's Office, the Sheriff's Office, we all worked together to make sure we had a law that actually is a law that has some teeth in it, not just feel-good legislation. But above and beyond those individuals, I want to thank all the animal advocates and the animal lovers that are in the audience today. You have fought for this law during this last month. You know that this law has teeth, and you have advocated for the law and publicized the law, and I understand it's gone from coast, not only coast to coast, but worldwide, as we see in the petition that was handed in today. And I think the reason you did that was this will be the toughest such law when we enacted tonight in the United States of America. It's a law that actually will punish individuals if they commit these crimes. It's not feel-good legislation. And some places try to enact feel-good legislation. In other words, they create a registry, and a person could be put on the registry. But if the person doesn't put himself on the registry or doesn't give correct information after he moves, well, there's no penalty for that. If the person on the registry who's not supposed to have animals goes out and gets an animal, well, there's no consequence for that or penalty for that. If a person sells or gives an animal to a person on that registry when they're not supposed to, we don't care, no penalty for that. Don't tell me that's a law that does anything. That's called feel good legislation. That's not what we're doing here today. I've heard some people say it's just an animal abuse registry. No, if you don't put yourself on that registry, there's consequences. If you get an animal when you're not supposed to, there are consequences. If you give an animal to a person you're not supposed to give, one, two, there are consequences. We are trying to prevent these individuals from getting their hands on animals again to kill our loved ones one more time. It's finally, if I can, it's not just about animals. Someone mentioned the studies where there are 100% correlation between these animal abusers and the abuse they commit on women and children. And if I can, very briefly, when Westchester County passed a law much like this one, their paper said the county legislature made their unanimous decision based upon the known ties between animal cruelty and domestic abuse. Supporters of the new legislation are hopeful that the public registry will help protect not only animals, but children. The registry should help to ensure that children in foster care are not placed in homes with known animal abusers. When I mentioned to our Commissioner of Social Services, Ms. Miller, a few weeks ago that I was moving forward with this law, her comment was, that's great, because we can utilize that to make sure people don't get their hands on our children that are animal abusers, because she knows the consequences that would, uh, that would happen if that occurred. So, finally, We're on the verge of passing this law, and I want to thank all my colleagues in advance for their support of this law. As I said, I want to thank the animal lovers and advocates in the audience, and if I can leave them with one final comment, keep your fight up 
for the rights of animals, and again, never, never settle for legislation that's just feel-good legislation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'd like to thank Legislator Inakis, 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 excuse me, too, for uh, working diligently on this law, working with the agencies that have to enforce this law. I know he's an animal, a dog lover, an animal lover, uh, as many of us are. And he, he worked on this law, which is acceptable and it's enforceable. And I thank you for that, Legislator Inakis. Inakis. With that said, let's uh, take a roll call. You want to be? You want to be? Is there anybody that doesn't want to be added? Let me ask that. And make it easy. Okay, add everyone, please. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Bonasek. Yes. Ekis. Yes. Amo. Yes. Nagnastakis. Yes. Benton. Yes. Berkman. Yes. Benelli. Yes. Cheney. Yes. Dillard. Yes. DeSalvo. Yes. Fagione. Yes. Hines. Yes. Chemnitz. Kulasek. Paduk. Yes. Ruskevich. Yes. Sullivan. Turnbull, Biro, yes. Wong, Brescia. 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I was remiss in not uh, saying 1A, receive and file, certificate to the clerk. Also in the audience tonight, we have Assemblyman Carl Robinick with us tonight, and Mayor Coyne from Cornwall. Okay, number two. Legislators Wong, DeSalvo, Benelli, Bonasek, Hemnitz, Benton, Hines. Local Law Introductory Number 4 of 2015. A local law amending Local Law Number 8 of 1968, known as the Orange County Charter, and Local Law Number 10 of 1969, known as the Orange County Administrative Code, as it previously <coughs> amended, providing for the consolidation of the Department of Information Technology with the Department of General Services. Second. Discussion? Yes, Martin. I'd like to have my new Okay, so granted. Anyone else? Hey, <laughs> Legislator Sullivan. Um, I read the uh, report entitled Enhancing the Department of General Services with Information Technology. Should read consolidation of two departments um, and removal of power from the Orange County Legislature. Um, all of the money stated for savings in this report in regards to the consolidation of these two departments can be achieved without the consolidation and without taking the power away from the Orange County Legislature by changing the Orange County Charter. This is why I will be saying voting no tonight. Okay, Legislator Amo and then Anagnus Dacus. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to support this. Let me just tell a little bit about it. I know when it first came up in our first meeting, in, our first, in, in the committee meeting, there was a lot of questions about uh, the consolidation efforts uh, in the specific two departments. I think we all knew as legislators that we needed to find ways to reduce costs to try to improve services to the, res to the residents of the county. And one of the ways is to look at what kinds of departments can we more efficiently bring together to deliver better services to our county residents. Uh, that was the mission that we started with. And the chairman uh, was very proactive in asking a group of us uh, to work with the county, county executive side of the house to try to think about a model that would work for any and all consolidations that we might confront. Because people are very easy to say, let's, let's save money and consolidate this, let's save money and consolidate that. We, we've been meeting to talk about criteria that should be used when you think about merging, consolidating, or, or having departments interact. And first on the top of our list is, does it improve the quality of services to the customers of Orange County? I use the word customers from a business model perspective, but we're really talking about internal customers of staff. We're talking about the vendors that come and do work for us. We're talking about the residents that have to use those services. So unless it meets that test, I don't think we should be doing it. I think it should, it should be cost efficient. It should be effective, more effective. It should be more efficient generally, not just cost-wise. And we should have a metric to measure whether or not we're doing a good job. All of these things are part of the work group that the chairman has established, and we hope working with the county exec side of the House, Mr. Burpo, we'll be able to use this, one, this model that he's put forth, which I think is a very thorough one, as a way to benchmark how we might attack, or how we might approach other types of efforts to bring other functions together. 
And we don't need to just think about departments, let's consolidate two into one. We may find that there's plenty of opportunities to merge back office work, plenty of opportunities to merge things like education and training across the county, to merge copying services across the county that are all now maybe departmentalized. But we have to be sure that we have a set of criteria. And through the help of Mr. Burkle and the county executive and, and uh, his office, I think we're on, well on the way to come up with a way to say, if we confront these types of interactions, we can do better for the residents of Orange County. So I'm going to support it, and I hope everyone else does. Is there a name second? Well, you're having trouble with my name tonight. Yeah, I know. Usually I'm the, one of the best at that, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, again. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say a few words on the consolidation. I understand the fears of some colleagues. Um, and actually, Ms. Sullivan is, is correct. My colleague, Ms. Sullivan, is correct. All the savings that are on the table right now uh, are there because of actions that have already occurred. But I don't think that's the reason we ought to be moving forward or not moving forward with the consolidation. I think the reason is um, we have to give the executive a chance um, to try some of his programs for cost cutting. Um, and consolidation of these departments is the idea he's come up with along with his commissioners. Um, and we have to give him that ability to see if it works or if it doesn't work. Again, if it doesn't work and somehow this is a big mistake, we need to then change back. But we can do that in the future. I think more important, the, the, the more important reason for doing this is probably because of Mr. Burpo. That's why I'm doing this, because of Commissioner Burpo. I can tell you, when he tells me something, I know it's true. And a lot of times I know it's true myself. I'm going to tell you, there are certain other people that work for the county that will tell me something, and I know it's not true. And yet they will continue to insist and try to tell me that it's true. That's not what Mr. Burpo does. So I trust him implicitly. I think he could do a good job. And the only way he's going to know if he can get the savings that the executive is hoping for is when he's running both departments and he puts his brain to work on those departments and we'll find out a year or two from now how he's doing and i have every confidence that we'll have tremendous savings thank you mr executive for moving forward with this mr broker for doing the best job that you can thank you legislative candidates I too have a wonderful sense of faith in, in Mr. Burpo, and that is not why I removed myself as a sponsor. I think that this would work as well, but the operative word there is think. I brought a lot of programs into school settings. I've seen Common Core come in, and that's a horror. What I would like to see happen is that, yes, we do this, but we do it on a pilot basis first. I don't want to be running off to change the charter right now, which is what you're going to have to do. And then if something doesn't work out, we say, oh, let's change it back. The charter is what we go by. That's our law. We have to do something substantial to say that, yeah, it works. Let's change the charter. So if we're going to have this, excuse me, as a benchmark, <clears throat> let's do it the right way. And let's see if it works, then change the charter, and then apply it to other areas. OK. Uh, Legislator Hines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I agree with uh, most of the comments that were said today. Mr. Burpo is, is one of the best commissioners we have in Orange County. He saved us millions of dollars since we've created the Department of General Services. And we did create the Department of General Services. I guess it was about four or five years ago. I don't remember the exact date. But uh, this is a way to evolve what we created and make it a little bit better. We've seen savings. We asked the county executive, as a legislature, we said, Let's consolidate. Let's find ways of saving money. Then he and his commissioners come to us and say, let's consolidate. Let's find ways of saving money. And some are going to say, no, I disagree with that. I think this is going to work fantastic. And the reason it will is because not only Mr. Burpo, but because of the, the uh, departments that we're consolidating. Everybody in the county uses the computer system. Everybody in the county uses the Department of General Services. That's the way it's set up. And we're lucky to have Mr. Burpo that can do both. Um, and this is a way to save money. I, I see nothing wrong with it. 
give it a shot. If, if, if it doesn't work, and I can't imagine it, it, it won't because it's set up perfectly. Last month it was referred back to committee because others wanted more information. Well, we got a presentation uh, from Mr. Burpo and uh, Commissioner Gross, and, and it was fantastic. They laid out the staffing. They laid out the reasons how CSEA has to, uh, we have to reformulate those positions so that there can be cross-training and, and use of the, the same employees to accomplish that savings. And this is going to be done with no layoffs. That's another important thing. This is a merger of the department that has vacancies. So no one's going to lose their job. And if anything, we're actually going to uh, hire some people for those that took the early out and those that left on their own. So I think this is going to work, and I, I too hope everybody supports it. Legislator Berkman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, Tom, welcome to the legislature. Uh, on this issue, uh, philosophically, I think consolidation is a, a useful concept for saving money. So I want to be uh, add my voice to those that at least want to give this a, a try. Uh, I know that Mr. Amo and Legislator Wong have met uh, to talk about trying to create a template for future mergers of departments of consolidation. I don't think that this one does it, but I think that we should, uh, I appreciate your efforts in, in, in uh, working towards that consolidation effort. So I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't know that this is gonna work out perfectly, I, nothing does, so I just wanna give it a try. I wanna add my voice t to that. And uh, Mr. Purple, you've been getting a lot of, where are you out there? Yeah. You've been getting a lot of praise, and of course I wanna add my voice to that as well. I have so much confidence in you, in fact, like I said in committee, I'm, I'm sure you could do this without hiring a, a deputy commissioner. <laughs> because in 60 days you're gonna be coming up with employment uh, schedules, and I'm looking forward to seeing that, so you, you can do it. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> Legislator Turnbull and then Legislator Benoni. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I share the same concerns that uh, Legislator Chemnitz and uh, Sullivan share. Um, I'm kind of on the fence on this one. I, I think a pilot program would have been better, uh, but I really think that We've just, you know, there's so much we can do with technology. In the presentation, it was clear that Mr. Erko has a handle all the opportunities that are there for us to uh, save money in this consolidation. And I don't think he'll come up short. Well, I mean, I think he'll do a good job. So I'm going to support it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to clarify an issue, and this is one of the issues that had the um, resolution sent back to committee, as Legislator Hines mentioned, and that was the relinquishing of the power of this legislature over to the executive branch. Um, when the changes are made, the descriptions and the um, responsibilities and authorities, that's going to be exactly the same as it is right now. So that is not going to be an issue. Uh, and I know that everyone has praised Mr. Burpo as a wonderful commissioner, and I add that. But I would also like to highlight the other individual who really stepped up to the plate and produced a very thorough, extensive report when we had the questions and we sent it back to committee. And that is Commissioner Steve Gross. I know he's not here this evening, but I felt I would be remiss if I didn't mention him. I think his report demonstrated and answered all the questions that we have, because quite frankly, when it first came to us, it was really kind of lackluster, and I can understand all the reservations everybody had. But after they both worked together and they gave us that presentation, I was very impressed, and I am very happy to support what they presented with us. Thank you. Thank you. Early. Absolutely. I'd just like to echo what Katie said. I, I have the utmost confidence in Commissioner Burpo, and I'm sure we're going to save money and it's going to be run effectively and efficiently. So with that said, Ro, you want to say something else? Okay. Thank you. I, I just am um, listening to my colleagues, and I would definitely be supporting this today. Um, and I do want to say for those uh, who are not supporting it, um, for the given, I, I do understand where you're coming from. 
for me, I, I felt that the presentation that was given to us in committee, it was done thoroughly, it was done completely, and it was done confidently. And, and I have no doubt um, that you know, moving forward, this is going to work very well. And like Mike and Eggstock has, has said, um, you know, we could always go back if there's any kind of issues and talk about this again, but I'm very confident what we're doing today, if we pass it, is, is the way to go. And I want to thank you and Steve Gross for all your work on this. Thank you. Roll call. Chairman, can I have oh. my name added? I'd like to replace Ms. Kenmas, please. You want to replace Ms. Kenmas? Yeah, you can do that in this case. <laughs> She's irreplaceable, right? <laughs> okay, so done. Roll call. Honestly? Ekis? Yes. Emo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Chemnitz? No. Kulisek? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Ruskevich? Yes. Sullivan? No. Turnbull? Bureau? Yes. Wong? Yes. Gresham? 19 eyes, two nose. And the Rockies Law people are still here. They're either enthralled with our outstanding performance up here or, or your buttons for punishment. I guess. <laughs> you don't have to stay if you don't want to. <laughs> okay, before we go to number three, I'd like to, I'd like to thank uh, Assemblyman, bon uh, Assemblyman, bon Assemblyman Robinick for uh, carrying this in the assembly, this next uh, item number three. So, number three, Jean. Legislators Bonasek, Benelli, Benton. Resolution of the County Legislature of the County of Orange, pursuant to the New York State Constitution, Article 9 and Municipal Home Rule Law, Section 40, sending a home rule request to the New York State Legislature seeking an enactment of Senate Bill S-4880 and Assembly Bill A-7279 for a special law pursuant to New York State Tax Law, Section 1210, extending the three quarters of 1% increase to the sales tax rate. Second. Discussion? Yes. Just want to state the obvious that this is not an increase in tax. This carries us at the same level. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Roll call? Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Dillard, yes. DeSalvo, Fagione, yes. Hines, Hemnitz, Corsac, yes. Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, no. Turnbull, Hero, yes. Wong, Gresham. 19 ayes, two noes. The resolution number four. Legislators Bonasek and Amo, resolution confirming the reappointments and appointments by the County Executive to the Orange County Planning Board pursuant to Section 9.03 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Yes. Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Wong, Gresham. 21 eyes. Resolution number five. Legislators Chemnitz, Bonasek, and Agnostakis and Hines. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2015 Orange County budget for the Department of Planning pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Yes, Legislator Agnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will be in support of this. I, I gave the reasons in the, uh, the committee, um, but I want to give them here again. Uh, some of the speakers that came up actually uh, correctly said, uh, the, the county, what was it, a few weeks ago, the county uh, had uh, an informational session, and they heard from, uh, there was an audience of about 800, and you probably heard it from 40 speakers or so. And uh, part of what they found out was that, and I think I was one of the people that stated this, that uh, this is what I stated in committee. We need to have a study that has actual data, that the people can actually trust that this is the information that uh, 
politicians, local elected officials are actually going to look at to make a decision that will affect their future tremendously. And I don't think the people in that area, the Monroe area, have had that feeling over the last year or two. Somehow they feel that they're getting shortchanged, that they're not getting the accurate information, not getting the truth, and that the elected officials are going to do something other than what's in the best interest of all the taxpayers of Orange County. Uh, the speaker said, and I said at the uh, uh, informational session, you have to go with the real data. And Curious Joel has actually produced the document that they've handed up to Albany that says on this 507 acres we will build 8,550 units Average family size 6.2 gives you over 53,000 people. So that has to be your starting point and do your analysis. Let the experts spend the 200,000 or less and come up with a report that has real information that people can trust. So I am 100% in favor of doing this. Now, I've been very nice to the executive so far. Now I'm going <laughs> to, yeah, I have to do it. Um, I take exception to being named to go on a committee for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't think the executive has the constitutional authority in Orange County to appoint legislators onto a committee. That's number one. But number, and I won't speak for other people, but that's how I feel. Uh, but number two, I don't in any way want to be on a committee and have my biases affect the results or have other people say that I affected the results of that process, whatever it is. I don't think I should. I think the experts should go and do the study that they're going to do and give us back a report. And I will look at what they give us back, and if it's on target, I will say it's on target. But Mr. Executive, if it's not on target and the data isn't accurate, I will be the first to tell everyone what I believe the errors in that report are. So again, I don't want to be handcuffed or have people think that I influence the results in any way. So I respectfully don't think that you have the authority to appoint legislators. But I thank you for your effort. I thank you for doing this. This is the first step. This is a necessary step, and I hope everyone approves this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll take the same approach that Mr. Nagastagas took, and, and I think everybody knows what my position was. I, I had it in committee, and it's been in the paper. So, but for the record, I'd like to, I'd like to make it here. Uh, I guess the idea of a parallel review is a little troubling to me, although I do agree that we need a very thorough review. As I've always said, I think we need a full review of it. And like what Agostaka said, we need to get all the data. And boy, do I agree with that. During the day, we read something in the Times Herald Record that is misrepresentation of the data. If somebody says such and such a number, so what the fact is, it's, we don't even know if it's true. So let's, let's get that answer. Let's find out what it means. And, and if, it, if, in fact, those numbers are correct, then let's, let's rule by them. I think the point for me, for my position, really is that as a person who's been on a planning board for, for eight or nine years in the town of Woodbury, uh, I'm pretty familiar with the secret process and, and the whole review process and the law and the cookbook, as some of you have been on the board know what I'm talking about. It's a clear law. It requires clear steps. And if you don't follow the steps, we all know in this legislature, that, that there's legal re uh, retribution for that if people don't follow the steps correctly. It, it's a cookbook. And, and in fact, that's what the, the environmental conservation says they call it a cookbook. There's steps to follow. If those steps aren't followed, that needs to be corrected. And I have no problem with that at all because that's the law. What my concern really is, is going down what I'd like to think is a slippery slope. And that we're entering into a really unknown territory here. But we're beginning to take a role as a county <coughs> In, be involved in a secret process where we have no direct standing. Whether it's Kiris Joel or whether it's Paul Jervis or whether it's Warwick, we don't have any direct standing in all of this, but we're going to spend $200,000 of taxpayers' dollars to get involved in that. So just think for a moment what we're doing. We're now going to really look at home rule and say, Mr. Mr. Sweeten and Warwick, I know you took the position. We have a concern because 50 people write us and tell us if we're concerned about something you're doing in the town of Warwick, we're going to spend $100,000 and go in and look over your shoulder and do a better job. I don't think Mr. Sweeten or any of the supervisors would really want us to start doing that, absent of this particular event. So it's that slippery slope, that precedence that we're starting. I, I'm sort of amazing that, that, I, that the county executive uh, isn't proposing another $100,000 to hire a consultant to look at the seeker for the government center that we just heard was a terrible job that he himself did. 
Why aren't we getting passed a resolution to have somebody from the outside as objective come in and look at the government centers here? Oh, we're not going to look at that, are we? No, why aren't we going to look at that? You answer the question why we're not going to look at that. We know why we're looking at it. This one. But that's, not what, that's a slippery slope we're going to do. And I don't know that any of our supervisors or mayors are really going to appreciate us opening that box that says we now have a precedent that if we don't like or 20 people or a popular group that doesn't like something that's going on in your community, we have plenty of annexation examples in the past that happen all the time. Are we going to then have somebody come before us with petitions and say, I've got these petitions, you guys have to fund the independent seat because we don't trust those people. We've got the bad stuff to go down. And I think the thing that we're also concerned about, I mentioned, is the budget. We're finding $200,000, and if we're really going to do a thorough review, I don't believe $200,000 will really get it done for us. But if it is, let's assume it's still $200,000. Today, we pulled $100,000 out of Valley View because it was too expensive. We're just going to start with a fifty thousand dollars. It's too expensive to spend a hundred thousand on the elderly, but it's okay to spend two hundred thousand dollars on an independent review that we don't like to consider. So I think we're down a slippery slope. We're making a mistake with this. Let's get the review. If it's not done right, let's go to court and do something about it. But it'll let's get the review. Let's set our cameras. With all due respect, Legislator Amo, you can talk about slippery slopes. You can talk about rims of the ridge. You can use whatever kind of language you like. The fact of the matter is, is that we as a county are an interested party. And an interested party does have a right to present its case. At the very end of um, Commissioner Martin's decision to give lead agency to Kiris Joel, at the very, very end, he did say the interested parties can present their case. And I'm one hell of an interested party. Legislator Hines and Legislator Berkman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I thank Supervisor Sweeten for coming. I read your uh, letter and the minutes from the uh, meeting of the supervisors, uh, mayors, and uh, I saw their concern, and we all understand why. And Mayor Coyne, I'm sorry you couldn't speak, but I'll try to say what uh, some of the things you would have said uh, addressing the wells. Uh, we talk about following the rules, and then all of a sudden the pipe changes. Uh, you know, there going to export water out of Cornwall as a backup supply, and now we hear maybe there won't be a backup supply, it'll just be the wells coming from Cornwall, right next to the wells that serve Woodbury now. So uh, I'm not sure about the rules, and that's why I support this so much. I actually said in committee, and I'll say it again today, that I think 99% of the Orange County residents were disrespected by this process and actually ignored by the DEC. I think we have to do a study. We owe it to the, the very association that Mr. Sweeten is the president of and all of our residents, because that's who they represent. <coughs> Those 99% that have emailed me and, and, and led me to believe that they felt disrespected. Um, we have to have the correct data. This is a huge financial impact on the county. Regardless of the study that uh, KJ has submitted indicating that the population is going to grow anyway, that's not a good enough answer, I don't think, for anybody in this room. We have to study the effects on DSS, as well as the roads, the sewer, and the water. Uh, the sewer capacity isn't necessarily there for high-density housing. The traffic is, is a, a nightmare in, in the Woodbury region now, in the Monroe-Woodbury region, everybody knows it. Um, to add high-density housing, I don't think, would help. Um, so this is $200,000 that hopefully can slow down this process or make this process work properly and legally, but can you imagine the cost in DSS alone if we don't do it? So I hope everybody supports it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My colleagues uh, make some very good points. First, Mr. Anagostaka said 200,000 or less. I wanted to let you know I was listening. I like the or less. Uh, these are lean economic times, so for us to consider a $200,000 expenditure for anything, we should give it scrutiny. Uh, the stakes are high in this big issue. What I'm, what I'm for, uh, as uh, Mr. Amo said, about uh, I want a thorough environmental review. Uh, I'm not sure that the data that will be collected from the uh, lead agency, with, the, the Curious Joel was acting as a lead agent, 
you know, that had puts people in a quandary as to whether the information is, is reliable. And uh, that's why I asked in the Democratic caucus months ago, before it was decided, that the DEC be the lead agency themselves, which I think is a, a better idea because they're, they're from outside. So we could have a, a closer, objective look. Um, Mr. Hines talks about the impact about DSS, Department of Social Services. Well, of course, that should be, I hope, that would be one of the items that's, that's analyzed, but not just one county department. Uh, I think we, to ensure fairness, we have to look at other county departments as well. Not just cherry pick one which is expensive, but that's what I want. I want a fair and open process. And part of the fair and open, if, and why? The objective is for, the, is for equal application of the law for all of our communities. So I think that uh, supporting this, this study hopefully will, be, uh, will aid us in that effort of equal application. We need to get to determine what the facts really are. So many issues when it comes to discussing Curious Joel, people have the impression uh, that their opinions are the facts. <laughs> and if you repeat them over and over again, people tend to accept them as facts. Well, and I could give you pl plenty of examples of that, but I'd like to uh, have this study deal with that, and I'd like to be able to ask those that are running the study to, uh, to answer some concerns that I have. Uh, and I think that should be open for all legislators, either by letter, uh, a committee to assist, I think that's a, a fine idea, and I think that uh, uh, the, the leadership of the, of the legislature should be determining that with your, your helpful input, Mr. County Executive. But I think it should be the chairman and the uh, majority minority leaders to, uh, to come up with the oversight committee. But I, but I welcome that, and uh, that's my points. Thank you. I'm going to have you go last, Steve. Okay. Uh, Okay, Legislator DeSalvo, then Legislator Ricas, Minority Leader Ricas, excuse me. So when I was uh, looking over this resolution, uh, my grandfather's saying comes to mind, everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die. Uh, this, this study is extremely important, it is necessary, and it's money well spent. And I am willing to help you, County Executive, in any capacity you need me to. Thank you. Minority Leader Ricas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I wanted to comment on this because I did have something to say uh, during uh, the committee meetings. First of all, I'm going to support this and support it thoroughly because I understand the urgency, the emergency issues that we have here. Uh, but as I stated in committee, this should be a bell for this legislature, a, a siren for this legislature, that we should come up with policy policy that governs this type of procedure in the future. When do we need to pull money and look at annexations? What are the requirements that we're going to set? And I would certainly hope that this committee, whatever advisory committee, would do that for us and then we can take a look at it and approve it or not. I don't like the idea, you know, bam, $200,000 and uh, especially during the time when we're talking deficits and nobody has mentioned to this point where this two hundred thousand dollars is going to be made up in a deficit budget we really have to think about that so i will support it no question but i think it's going to create or should create more work for this legislature senator benelli legislator sullivan thank you mr chairman Many of the comments made by my colleague, Mr. Akis, uh, I do agree with. Um, one of my concerns when it was presented and went through the committee process was that this is the 507 acre annexation, but we have two other annexations there in the pipeline. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to make sure that if we were going to embark on this type of a study, which is rather unprecedented for the county to do, um, and it's something necessary for the county to do, that the particulars and the impacts that those particular petitions for annexation would have would be looked at as well. Uh, the last one that was just filed had properties from Monroe wanting to move into the town of Blooming Grove. 
So that, that's another variable that um, I have been assured in talking with the county executive's office at committee meetings that that would be something that would be undertaken. So I will be supporting this resolution. And as far as the committee, as a matter of full disclosure, I did not know that I was selected as one of these people, but the county executive, as you know, I am happy to help wherever I can. Thank you. Legislator Sol. Mr. Newhouse, I just want to say and echo that no, I do not believe you have the authority to create a committee. I'd also like to say from what I'm hearing, there are many people who do not trust this report. I don't blame them because up until now, I don't think the county has been very forthcoming with information regarding this issue. Although I would say that if this report, if, if this report comes out in a fair manner, in depth, the way it was described tonight, that I would be very, very pleased. Um, so please, let that happen. Um, I would also be very, very pleased if after this, that you also fulfill your promise to my friends in Crawford that you made right before you got elected. And I think you know which promise that is. Um, to Mr. Newhouse, to Mr. Amo, um, I'd like to say that if you want to write a resolution that would hire a consultant to study the government center, I'd support that. Fact, if you want to write a resolution claiming that you and this county legislature actually supports the elderly in Valley Green Nursing Home, I would support that as well. So please know that you would have my support on that. I look forward to you taking the lead in that. And I'd also like to say that yes, I would support this $200,000 for this study because it is not only important for Monroe, but this study, this project, this annexation is going to affect every single district in this county. I just, before Steve go, I just wanted to say that I'm going to support this resolution. Um, normally, I would agree with what Legislator Amo expounded earlier with respect to home rule. But in this case, um, I'm concerned about the magnitude of the potential growth in that area, and it affects the the entire county of Orange. Because this is gro potential growth that is unprecedented in the history of the county of Orange. Uh, a couple of months ago, there was, a, um, you know, John McCary brought us the usual list of properties to be bought, and I think KJ was looking to purchase a piece of property outside of their, their bounds, whether it was for water exploration or whatever purposes. And there were a few legislators who were against it. I wouldn't have been against that. Because why would I be against that when I'm not against it for any other municipalities? We have to treat everybody fairly. But this is growth that is exp potentially exponential, and I certainly would support this. And 200000 is a lot of money. But in the whole scheme of things and the effects, that we all know the effects of growth, um, I don't think 200000 is a lot of money. Okay, Steve, Shannon and then Steve. Um, I just want to echo a couple of the comments said. I think I mentioned these in committee also. I do share um, Legislator Amos concerns about the precedent it sets. Um, but at the same time, I understand that this is a different situation than most that we are faced with, and there's an important need to have a thorough review um, that people can have confidence in. Um, but I do have some concerns about what the ongoing costs will be. You know, I was assured that we'll stay close and hopefully under the 200000 but I do think it, we run the risk of it opening up um, some further litigation for us that will entail some future costs. So in these times, I think that's important to keep in mind. And finally, I really would encourage that the review include all the departments of our county that um, are touched and not touched by the residents of Curious Joel. So as we all know, there are some departments, some agencies and services that they access tremendously and some that they don't access at all. So I hope that our report reviews that um, so that we have an accurate review um, in the program, in the report. Thank you. County exec? Uh, just a couple. Just a couple quick things. Uh, 
Number one, uh, I, I was a town supervisor for a number of years. Mike Sweeten and I served together. Uh, I was his vice chair of the Association of Town Supervisors. And Mr. Amo, you're right, and Mr. Ekis and everybody else, this is uncharted territory. But there's not one city, village, or town in Orange County that I know <coughs> ignores the laws and ignores foils and treats the public and other governments the way Kirsten Wall does. They have made this bet that we are now having to look into. The New York State has completely failed us. We still today, a year this thing has started, there's not one law introduced in the state legislature. Not one law. This thing was supposed to, lead agency was supposed to be decided last May. They punted till after election day. So this committee, I know, the second thing, this committee, the, the biggest thing that United Monroe and the rest of the county is concerned about is openness and fairness. I don't care if you want to be on the committee or not, and I want to thank you, Katie and Jimmy, for, for agreeing to be on there, because I was going to give my I'm going to stand alone speech. Because the more people that are on here, people in Cornwall trust Pep. Some people in United Monroe trust you, Mike. They might like you to be on it. You might have a bias. You're, you might, you're against the annexation, but you know what? I've got to believe Mr. Amos for it. So if there's other people from different part, walks of life representing different communities, that's the fairest way you're going to vet out this process. You don't want to come, don't come. But I'm telling you right now, it's going to be open to the legislators. I know, you're, I know most of you are concerned, and this is a necessary thing. $200,000, it's a lot of money. We were talking about money, but you know what? It's chump change when you look at if things go wrong and the millions of dollars it could cost us if it goes the other way. Now, I'm tired of seeing politicians come around and throwing hand grenades at this. You've seen this from all levels of government. Somebody should do something. Somebody should do something. Somebody should do something. We're doing something. This is the first step to doing it the right way. I said it at that reform. Uh, some of the legislators were there. I've never seen one lawsuit go the right way the last 20 years. Somebody said, oh, well, the one for the sewer plant went the right way. Well, the sewer plant's still growing. More people are adding sewer to it. That's not a victory to me. So this is the right thing to correct things, guys, and I know it's uncharted territory. I support you guys. I, I appreciate the support you have for going down this level. I've talked to many of you individually, regardless of party. This is a very big concern. We think the government center is big, and it is. Valid view, budget crisis. The annexation, to me, has moved to first place as the most controversial, most impacting uh, uh, proposal in front of us right now. The impacts of that can change the landscape of this whole region for decades, forever. The real estate market has already been impacted. I had real estate agents coming to me today that the prices and the values of houses have declined because of this. Just the aspect of this. Try to sell a house in Monroe right now, and you Google Monroe and what's going on in that community. That's the difference. So I appreciate your faith in this. And I know there's a lot of emotions here, and I'm friends with you, Mike. I, I honorably disagree with you, uh, but this is important for Orange County, so I appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Yes. Yes. Amo. No. The Nagnostakis. Yes. Benton. Berkman. Yes. Benelli. Cheney. Dillard. DeSalvo. Yes. Baggione, yes. Hines, yes. Hemnitz, yes. Kulisek, yes. Paduk, Ruskevich, yes. Sullivan, Turnbull, yes. Vero, yes. Wong, Gresham. 20 ayes, 1 no. Okay, resolution number six. Legislators Bonasek, Benton, and DeSalvo. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2015 Orange County budget for the Orange County Attorney's Office pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Oh, legislator and Stockers. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had a call today from a from a resident in Orange County who asked me to explain this to them, and I don't know that I did a very good job of explaining it. Partly because um, this really started way before my time on the legislature, um, so I know that we have the county attorney here. I was wondering. Um, can he just briefly, in one or two minutes, uh, explain this so I have it 100% correct and any other legislators that may want to 
uh, have it 100% correct also, if that's okay? Get in committee from what I'm told. Can our attorney explain it very quickly? Or there's Langdon, so if he wants. Langdon, you want to? Can I explain something that's been going on since 2002 and in the courts in 2005 quickly? I can explain it, but I can't necessarily do it quickly. The sum and substance of it is this. In 2002, the former county executive entered into an IMA with the village of Curious Joel, where the county and the village were going to engage in some road smoothing at an intersection in the town of Monroe. In 2005, the IMA was amended to say the county would commence eminent domain proceedings against a piece of property, not resulting though in the transfer of development rights with respect to that parcel. The county went, condemned the property, and under condemnation you make an offer, uh, the, the condemnee can object to it, and you litigate over the price later on. So the county's expert came up with a price of $33,000 in value for the property, the condemnee's appraiser came up with a value of about $1.1 .1 million for the property. So suffice to say, we're, we're off to the races as a result from that. And we've been in court on a couple of different matters here. First is with the condemnee, what's the valuation? And we've gone through the trial, and the, the trial court said the condemnation value was what the county's expert asserted was. That our matter was argued up on appeal. And that's what the whole issue is where they hired outside counsel in 2009 to deal with. The appeal was argued last December. I think it was December 14th. Decisions come out every Wednesday at 3 p.m. And I check every Wednesday at 3 p.m. There's been no decision. So that's litigation number one where they've hired the outside counsel. Litigation number two, we're dealing with the village of Curious Joel because part of the agreement entered into by the former county executive is that the village would, would pay us for all our costs and that we could withhold their sales tax if they didn't pay us for all our costs. The village did not pay our costs. We withheld their sales tax. The judge stopped us temporarily from withholding their sales tax, at least for the time being. And, and we're still in litigation with them as well. So there's two elements of litigation. The one the special counsel was retained for, as I said, I think in 2009, uh, was for the valuation of the parcel. And the village will take a contrary position. The village will say that the county was supposed to share with them certain facts about the litigation, which I'm not going to get into publicly. They'll take a position that, that my office takes a contrary position. Not being here in 2009, quite frankly, I can only tell you what my predecessor did. Legislator Nagus Dox, any more questions? Legislator Amo. Just, just, a, just a comment to Mr. Chapman's presentation. He went back to 2002. Bernal will appreciate it. The legislative council will appreciate that. Is that when I came into office in 1998, uh, the reform of the, the Southeast Lawrence Traffic Task Force, and all the municipalities in the southern part of the county came together and said, what is a major issue that we need to deal with in this part of the county? And the traffic was the number one issue. We all know that that's the one that we won. But what many people don't know about, Mike Frerichs, the time of the supervisor, and we asked, could we straighten out Route 105? So we got through this legislature money to straighten out Route 105. And if anybody doesn't know where that is, it's if you know the Monroe area where the trooper barracks is, right at the corner of, I guess, a Dinager and 105, right across the street from that is that undeveloped land, the big hill. That's what you're talking about. That's a piece of land. And what they did is they had to take a piece of that land out to straighten out Route 105 because it had a horrific curve going on it. And people were... So it goes all the way back to 99, 90... We tried to get, get fix a traffic problem, and, and Langley's right, it's a mess, it's crazy. Uh, everything he said is correct. But it goes way back. With, under the heading, I think, no good deed goes unpunished. Honestly? Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Monagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Yes. Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Padue? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? Brescia? 21 eyes. 
was going to brag about how well the microphones were working tonight. Oh well. Okay, what number? We're on number seven, right? Uh, resolution number seven. Legislator Benelli and Miscavige, resolution of the Orange County Legislature amending its prior resolution number 106 of 2014 in relation to issuing a negative declaration under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEQA, with respect to the reconstruction, renovation, and or expansion of the Orange County Government Center, classifying the action as type one and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse impact, environmental impacts. Thank you. Discussion? Minority Leader Ecos. Um, we've had a plethora of comments uh, relative to the secret and to the Orange County Government Center. Um, and I've taken a long time to study this particular uh, resolution and this change. Um, I was not as intimately involved before with the Orange County Government Center because I thought everything was going well. Uh, but then as more information came to us, I did not feel that was so. Uh, we have a lawsuit we're all familiar with uh, about this and this specific issue, the CECRA, for the Orange County Government Center. And uh, we have been advised, and I want to tell everybody this, that although we have a CECRA that covers everything already, any changes, that have been made to our plans and so on like that, that we could take and adopt this amendment to the CECRA and it would more clearly define what we're doing. My question relative to that is number one, what about tomorrow when another change comes to us? We redo the CECRA again to continue to um, accurately describe what we're doing. And of course, immediately I had some folks tell me back, well, these were major uh, changes. Well, my compatriot's decision on what's major may be different than mine. Um, and so, since we have a secret which already covers what we need, I am not inclined to, in any way, back this amendment. Um, two reasons stick out. The first one is that I have been told several times by the county attorney that because we passed the prior CEQA, we gave carte blanche to Clark Patterson and Lee uh, because the word facade is in the secret that somehow gave approval that the facade could be ripped off inside and outside of the building. I, that was not my intent when I passed the secret. My intent was strictly an environmental review, not to give a company, any company, at any time that I pass the secret, carte blanche. The second thing about this amendment is if you took the time to read it, as I did, and you look at the attachment B part, which has been authored, the second to last sentence, very second to last sentence says, by virtue of the consolidation, the county continues to preserve two thirds of the structure of the building. Preserve? I went to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Okay, preserve means, according to Webster, to keep safe, to guard, to protect, to keep from decaying, to maintain. And then there were other things about processing food that I didn't think applied in this case. The, the offer that we're tearing the block completely off, right or wrong, cannot be preserving the structure of this building. This amendment cannot describe what we're doing. We're not cleaning anything up. We're unfortunately adding to it. And I really ask everybody, 
to read carefully if you haven't that the proposal we have at this point about tearing the facade off and replacing it does not, is not covered by this amendment and by the changes in here. There are others, they're minor to me, and I understand that, but I just can't go along with this. I also can't go along with it because um, I thank the county attorney today for having a discussion with me. This particular amendment will give the ability for anybody to file an Article 78, okay, I believe over the next four months, period of the next four months, uh, on the sequel. And, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not at the point right now where I want to add any more holdups to this whole process. So I would like to just continue forward with what we're doing at this point in time and try to correct the wrongs that have been done. Thank you. Roll call. I didn't see your hand up. Hand up. Okay. Legislator Ramo, then Sullivan, and then Turnbull. I'm going to be out of the room for three minutes. By rule, order, uh, majority leader runs the meeting all now. Ms. Kirk, I'm, I just want to say I'm, I'm going to support this because I, for how many years we were working on trying to get somewhere at the government center, and I just want to see it move forward. But as I said in my previous comment, I would not be surprised if populist opinion reached out to the county exec from the opposition to this and said, go ahead and hire an independent contractor to review this seeking to be done right. And then what are we going to do? next month, putting $100,000 up to try to find out whether this was done right. Thank you. Legislator Sullivan. Uh, uh, sorry, to Matt. Thank you. Leader. I've, I've uh, spoken to this in uh, committee, and um, I'll say what I said there, here. I won't be supporting this resolution. And the reasons are numerous, but I'll just speak to uh, the three most important. You know, back when we um, voted on the BB plus op option, although I didn't support it after it passed, uh, I did support it. I, I voted for this, the subsequent CEQA. Uh, but since then, the process has gone awry. I think the thing that I find most outrageous is that, and Mr. Amo will agree, because I remember him speaking to how important it was that we, would t we determined what the necessary square foot of, should be for our departments and to serve the people of the county and the adjacencies. And that number was 170,000 square feet. We're now looking at a project of 205,000 square feet. The way this was justified, they used a term called a gasket. Um, I've been in construction my whole life. I've never heard that term, but I was told that it's, it's, it's hallways, it's connecting spaces. Well, let's say I was going to have a house built, and the guy told me it was going to cost $100 a square foot. And I said, well, I want a 2,000 square foot house. And then he started the project, and he came back to me, and he said, well, your house is going to be 2,500 square feet, so it's going to cost you an additional so much uh, per square foot. And that's essentially what's happened here. And we were told that although the square footage of the project increased by 25,000 square feet, that the cost went down. Am I the only one that realizes that that is impossible. The project grows by 25,000 square feet. It grows proportionately in price. My calculation is the minimal, minim, minimum amount is about $5 million that we added to this project. Now, and that's at a very conservative $250 a square foot. So that's, that's one issue that I have a problem with, why I won't be su supporting this resolution. Next one is the walls. Ms. Deke spoke to it, and I'll, I'll speak to it also. We were provided with a spreadsheet that suggests that taking the walls down and putting up new walls costs less money and 
cleaning, fumigating, insulating, <coughs> and repointing the existing walls. Well, I was really baffled by this spreadsheet, and when I looked into it, I saw why they were able to make that case, because I really didn't know how they arrived at that conclusion. Well, the way they arrived at that conclusion is they use a number of about $45 a square foot for the repointing. Now, two things here. One is that anybody can go and look at the mortar joints in that building and see that they're in excellent shape. They don't need to be repointed. Let's say they did need to be repointed. Certainly, you know, I, I went online, I called a friend who has RS means, I applied for RS means online, uh, and the, the highest number I can come up with is, is almost half of the num number they use, $25 a square foot. So they're making the case for removing the walls by using a spreadsheet that isn't accurate. And, you know, we have engineers and experts that have, you know, Bill Clark himself has said that the walls don't need to come down. But we're taking them down anyway. You know, we can look back to the LaBella report. When they were trying to make the case that it would be cheaper to knock the building down and put up a new building because it would cost $8 million to replace the walls. But now that we want to make the opposite case, all of a sudden the cost is half of that. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's, it's just incredible. Yes, okay. So, um, I will be supporting this. Thank you. What is Sarah Sullivan and then Berkman? I, I just want to say that um, I don't believe I ever supported any vote on this project. I think it was dysfunctional before I even got elected to this legislature. The county is backtracking on this CEQA. Um, by voting yes, again, we are approving all of the changes that were made, some made in committee, some made behind closed doors, some made in a special committee that the county executive created, created it was all over the place. We never had the chance as a legislature to vote or debate it in public session. What this secret does in the 11th hour is it is a reaction to a lawsuit. It takes away the very democratic process that so many people fought for. I would beg of you to vote no on this secret because it makes a mockery of what government is supposed to be. I will be voting no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity. Uh, I'd like to thank my, my Democratic colleagues. Uh, they made a lot of points that I agree with, starting with Mr. Ekus. Mr. Turnbull did the, uh, did the review of each one of the issues, and, and it, it's worth restating uh, at least one more time uh, from me as well about how the legislature did not debate, discuss, or vote upon a 20,000 square foot found new space. I believe that's a fact. I also believe it's a fact that we didn't vote to take down all of the walls. We didn't also, we did not vote for a fourth floor. So those are three very important components about this building project. Those that have supported those, those uh, changes say, or at least told us initially that like the word facade, they took the one word facade and that gave them the opportunity to justify knocking down all the walls. I'm still scratching my head about that. And Matt, you know, did the arithmetic for us. 20,000 square foot of found space and it's less money to develop it. That's what they're telling us. It doesn't add up to me. But uh, most of all, the issue before us now is 
to have yet another secret where we're saying it has no appreciable, no, I don't know if the word is appreciable, no significant impact on the, uh, negative impact on the environment. Well, we have to have a, a further discussion for that. That's why I thought there should be a public hearing. I think one of the speakers mentioned that as well. I think that, that the process, uh, even though it uh, might take some time, I think that that's what we should stand for. We should stand for a legislative oversight from the appropriate legislative committee. From the beginning, the authority has rested with the Physical Services Committee and not any other special committee. There were other spe special committees I served on, most of them. <laughs> but I was very clear that those were only advisory anyway. But that's why I'm voting to no today. I'm, I'm really hesitant, particularly after the explanation of saying that the first seeker that we somehow gave our approval for knocking down walls that we didn't agree to knock down. Now, if I don't have that right, somebody please correct me, because I think that's exactly what was stated. Yeah, I request a 10 minute caucus, please. I heard a legal issue that I'd like to clarify. start the meeting. Uh, first up, I'm going to recognize the county. Uh, silence, please. I'm going to recognize the county attorney to address a few points. Thank you. Mr. Hines said he saw me jumping in the audience and he was right. I just want to clarify a couple of points. Mr. Ekes said today, I believe, and I'm quoting here because I took it down, that he spoke with me and implied he spoke to me today. I, I'm not sure you meant me, sir. Did you mean legislative council? Yes. I'm sorry if I misspoke. You yes. said county attorney. You meant legislative council. I, I do. Okay. Yeah. And, and you, you, you me I think you meant to say then that she, as opposed to I, said that this quote gives anyone another four-month statute of limitations. I, I just want to say for the record, I respectfully don't agree with that statement. I'm not sure she agrees with that statement. But what will happen from time to time is council will put in pleadings Legislator X said he spoke to the county attorney and said the following, and then all of a sudden somebody moves to disqualify my office from representing you. So I just want to clarify clearly that I didn't say it. I don't believe it's accurate. Um, and, and that's really all I have to say. And as to the statute of limitations, we're already in litigation. So the statute of limitations questions, I'm not sure it's as relevant as, as one might think anyway. I don't mean that disrespectful. I just, just mean that we're already in litigation. So it's a fait accompli in that sense. Okay, Kevin, did you have anything else? Okay, was there anyone else after Chris? Okay, Majority Leader, Minority Leader, excuse me. Ekes. Don't jump me up. I do apologize. Um, yeah, I was emotional about it because reading through this whole thing, and I do want to correct it, uh, Mr. Chapman, I, I did not speak to you about the, uh, the amendment or the Article 78 issue. You're absolutely correct. I spoke with legislative counsel. People confuse us all the time, and, and it's always to my credit and your detriment. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Are we ready for roll call yet? A roll call? Bonnison? Yes. Ekes? No. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Yes. Berkman? No. Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Yes. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Hemnitz? No. Pulisek? The Duke? No. Gavich, Sullivan, no. Turnbull, no. Bureau, yes. Wong, yeah. Gresham. 14 I, 6 no is one abstention. Okay, number eight, which is a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Which said is Turnbull, Paduke, Benton, and Benelli. Bond resolution dated May 7, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing acquisition and installation of furniture, fixtures, equipment, and information technology improvements 
for the Board of Elections and Information Technology Building and the 1841 Courthouse and Annex Building, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 300000 appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 300000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Aye. Yes. yes. I, I just want to say that I, I still haven't gotten an answer as to where the list is of inventory and furniture. I'm going to vote yes on this just so that we go forward. But I wonder, does anyone else wonder if there's a list? There has been a list. Was there a discussion as to? Yes. Is that a legal question, um, Ms. Reed, that you needed to answer? <coughs> um, I, I don't feel that I had the, the answer that I needed. Katie, did but you like want to I answer said, that? I am going to um, vote yes for this anyway. And I would just like to state that this is not a good way to do business. Katie, do you want to? Yes, I would. And uh, I thank you for your faith in us, Ms. Sullivan. But I will say that this was distributed at not one but two meetings. Uh, the first submission was lacking two of the departments, which were IT and Annex. This included four different departments. It included Board of Elections, Tourism, IT, and then Annexation. When we noted that the IT and Annexation papers were left out, that was included as well and all of the tallies were given with the total inventory in regard to every single room that is in the new facility and a whole laundry list of things that were there. Enough. Additionally, uh, there was some question as to, well, what could we take with us? And that was also provided along with pictures, especially from Board of Elections and one of the commissioners is actually taking his existing desk and some chairs and some other file cabinets, and there was a list of that as well that was distributed. Okay, thank you. Legislator Turnbull. Yeah, I think there's a little confusion. The list that, um, and it's not really a list, it was a request for the furniture that was being reused. And we never saw that list or that information. Well, if you saw it in committee, then it should be available. We didn't see it. I didn't see it in my committee. It was discussed in committee. And there was discussion, but it, there was not an actual list. In okay, well, let's see if we can get those lists. That's all. Legislator Turnbull and Legislator Sullivan. Okay, roll call. No, no big deal. No big deal. Just don't let it happen. Yes. Eddie Egas? No. Amo? Yeah. Anagostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Baggione? Hines? No. Eminence? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Biro? Baum? Brescia? 19 ayes, 2 no's. Resolution number 9. Wick, wick. Legislators Benton and Hines, resolution reviewing and affirming the Orange County Debt Management Policy. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Baggione? Yes. Hines? Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia. 20 ayes, 1 abstention. Resolution number 10. Legislators Benton and Benelli. Resolution amending and reaffirming the Orange County Investment Policy pursuant to Article 3, Section 3.02D of the Orange County Charter and Section 39 of the New York State General Municipal Law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Baggione? Yes. Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Biro? Wong? Brescia. 
20 ayes, one abstention. Okay, A11 A and A11 are informational. Um, resolution 11. Legislator Benton, resolution accepting and confirming the report of the apportionment of the mortgage tax for the period October 1st, 2014 through March 31st, 2015, as computed from statement filed by the county clerk. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Bagione? Yes. Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 12. Legislator Benton, resolution authorizing a private sale conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County, pursuant to section 1018.4 of real property tax law in Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, resolution number 13, which is a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Benton and Nagnostakis, resolution of the Ar County of Orange, New York, amending various bond resolutions to reduce authorizations for unissued bond amounts. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 14, another bond resolution. Legislators Benton and Berkman, bond resolution dated May 7, 2015, bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. No, that one wasn't no, bold. 15 is bold. No, not 14. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, straighten up. <laughs> okay, we're on 14, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, bond resolution dated May 7, 2015, bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of equipment for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation, <laughs> stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 150000 appropriating 50000 therefore, in addition to the 50000 previously appropriated, and authorizing the issuance of 50,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Berkman. Very brief com comment. Mr. Ledoux, thank you for your cooperation on this resolution. I appreciate it. And so do the taxpayers of Orange County. Tell you to be back next year, though, didn't you? Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, roll call. Honestly? Yes. Ekes? Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Ch Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, and Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 15's off, 16 and 17 collectively. Discussion? Uh, let's say Paduk. Yes, you can. 16. Okay, from my Paduk. Okay, roll. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Biro? Wong? And Brescia? 21 eyes. Good. Resolution number 18. Legislators in Agnostakis and Chemnitz, resolution of the Orange County Legislature recognizing National Nursing Home Week, May 10, 2015, through May 16, 2015. Second. Discussion? Yes, Minority Leader Ekes. Would you please add all Democrats? Okay. Same thing, Melissa? Okay. Michael? Okay. All added. Roll call. Oh, Matt wants? Okay. Go ahead, Matt. i look back in the, in the corner here, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, um, Yell at me if I know. I, I just want to speak to this resolution. I'm, I'm pleased to be reminded that it's National Nursing Week and um, Mother's Day is Sunday, so I have a dual purpose. Uh, my wife, for 36 years, she's a nurse, 
When I met her, she's still a nurse. And I get an inside look at what nurses do. Uh, probably nobody has benefited more from this relationship of being married to a nurse than I have. I probably wouldn't be sitting here. Uh, if you remember last uh, summer when, uh, according to Mr. Hines, I had a heart attack. But I really didn't. I just had a 95% blockage of my main coronary, which my close. cardiology were. <laughs> My cardiology nurse wife identified, and here I am. So, but I'm thinking back the years when she worked for Westchester Medical Center with terminally ill teenagers, um, and the subsequent years after that where she worked in PEDS. Um, currently, she's a heart transplant team coordinator, and she gets up in the middle of the night. She tracks these hearts and uh, talks to these individuals, gets them into the hospitals. And I get an inside look at that activity and see it really does take a special kind of person to do these things. And I'm sure we all have our stories and our experiences with these wonderful nurses, so please add my name. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. I was just pointed out to me it's Nursing Home Week, but does that still qualify? I like your story way back when, and I like it again tonight. But. Uh, never mind. <laughs> that was good. You're just making sure everybody's awake. Thanks, man. Okay, roll call. Bonasek, Ikes, Amo, Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Padu, Kriskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, Gresh, 21 eyes. Okay, resolution number 19. Legislators Ekis and Bonasek, resolution of the Orange County Legislature designated May 2015 as Lyme Disease Awareness Month. Discussion? Yes, I know. Okay, absolutely. Okay, everybody? Okay. Good roll call. Bonasek? Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSavo, Faggio, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulsek, Padu, Kriskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, Gresham. 21 eyes. Okay, number 20, which is bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Chemnitz, Ekis, Benton, and Turnbull. Bond resolution dated May 7, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing acquisition of food service equipment, kitchen equipment for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 50,000, appropriating set amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 50,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Right. Discussion. Bonasek, Ekis, yes. Emo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, Gresham, 21 eyes. Okay, number 21, bond resolution also, two-thirds. Legislators Ekis, Bonasek, Benton, and Nagdastakis. Bond resolution dated May 7, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the partial reconstruction of the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 132500 appropriating 82500 therefore, in addition to the 50000 previously appropriated, and authorizing the issuance of 82,500 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek. Yes. Ekis. Yes. Amo. Yes. Nagnostakis. Benton. Berkman. Benelli. Cheney. Dillard. DeSalvo. Fagione. Hines. Chemnitz. Kulisek. Padu. Ruskevich. Sullivan. Turnbull. Bureau. Wong. Gresham. 21 eyes. 22. Another bond resolution. Two thirds. Legislators Benton and Kulisek. Bond resolution dated May 7, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing financing of capital projects included in the 2015 capital budget of the county for various improvements to Orange County Community College campus facilities, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $1,300,000, appropriating said amount therefore, authorizing the issuance of 650,000 bonds of the county to finance a portion of said appropriation and authorizing the expenditure of 650000 expected to be received from the state of New York to pay the balance of said appropriation. Second. 
Discussion? Yes, Minority Liquor. Yes. Thank you. Just very quickly, uh, since this is about Orange County Community College, I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Cheney for working with me and uh, others in selecting the grand president, who I'm sure will take and spend this money wisely. Thank you to both of you. Okay, roll call. Honestly? Yes. Ekus? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnes Dawkins? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Bagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Wong, Gresham. 20 ayes, 1 no. Okay, number 23. Legislators DeSalvo and Berkman, resolution designating Orange County Tourism as the Tourism Promotion Agency of Orange County, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Gresham, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekus? Yes. Amo, yes. Managnus Dacus, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 25. 24, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Legislators Bonasek and Ekus, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Probation Department to accept funds from the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Yes, Minority Leader. Yes. I believe Mr. Turnbull would like to say that. Definitely. Oh. You want to speak or you want to? Okay. Okay, Shannon? Yes. Okay, roll call. Honasek? Yes. Ekus? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, and Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, resolution 25. Legislators Ekus and Bonasek, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County District Attorney's Office to accept funds from the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Yes. Did you add, uh, Mr. Yes, I will. Salvo okay. and Dillard? Yes. Okay. Just Salvo. Just Salvo. Cool, you want to be added? Okay. Say it again. Just Salvo. Wait, right, what did I say? <laughs> You're, you're an ass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I call myself out of line. I'm sorry. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek, Ekus, Amo, Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, and Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 26. Legislators DeSalvo and Ekus, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create the project manager group violence intervention position at the Orange County District Attorney's Office, pursuant to section 2.02I of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? You want to be added, Jim? Okay. You want to be added, Jeff? Or you want to speak? I'd like my name, please, uh, added right next to Mr. DeSalvo. Okay. <laughs> Curly, you want to be added? Yeah. Okay. By all means, all. Okay, roll call. Anasek? Yes. Ekus? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera? Wong? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 26. I thought so. The answer gave me. I, I just asked the answer at that. 27. <laughs> it wasn't only me. Legislators Ekus and Bonasek, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify principal account clerk to associate account clerk 2 at the Orange County District Attorney's Office pursuant to section 2.02I of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. <laughs> okay. Added. Yes, Curly. Yeah. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek, Ekus, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, 
Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Prescavich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, Gretchen. 21 ayes. Twenty. No, twenty. Okay, twenty-eight. Legislators Vero and Wong, resolution confirming the reappointments by the county executive to the Orange County Human Rights Commission. Second. Minority leader Nikos. Please add all Democrats. Okay. Wilson. Sure. Michael. Okay. Roll call. Yes. yes. We are. Okay. Everybody's on. Anasek? Yes. Ikas? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnes Stopkins, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Wong, Gresham. 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is cleared. Okay, thank you. No public participation at the end. Okay, thank you. Meeting's adjourned. Don't move.